The Cube's live coverage is made possible by funding from Dell Technologies, creating technologies that drive human progress. Welcome back to Spain, everyone. Lisa Martin here with theCUBE, Dave Vellante, my co-host for the next four days. We're live in Barcelona covering MWC 23. This is only day one, but I'll tell you, the theme of this conference this year is velocity, and I don't know about you, Dave, but this day is flying by already. This is ecosystem day. We're going to have a great discussion on the ecosystem next. Well, we're seeing the disaggregation of the hardened telco stack, and that necessitates an ecosystem Open, we're going to talk about Open RAN, we've been talking about it all, even leading up to the show. Yeah. It's a critical technology enabler, and it's compulsory to have an ecosystem to support that. Absolutely compulsory. We've got two guests here joining us, Gautam Bagra, Vice President of Partnerships at Dell, and Scott Walker, Vice President of Global Telco Ecosystem at Wind River. Guys, welcome to the program. Thank you for having here. us. So Thank you've you got some us. news. This is day one of the conference. There's some news. Gautam, let's start with you. Yeah. Unpack it. Yeah, well, there's a lot of news, as you know, on Dell World. Uh, one of the things we're very excited to announce today is the launch of the Open Telecom Ecosystems community. I think, Dave, as you mentioned, getting into an open RAN world is, is a challenge, and we know some of the challenges that our customers face. To help solve for those challenges, Dell wants to work with like-minded partners and customers to build innovative solutions and join go-to-market. So we're launching that today. Wind River is one of our flagship partners for that, and I'm excited to be here to talk about that as well. Can you guys talk a little bit about the partnership, maybe a little bit about Wind River, so the audience gets that context? Sure, absolutely, and the theme of the show, Velocity, is what this partnership is all about. We create velocity for operators if they want to adopt Open RAN, right? We simplify it. Wind River, as a company, um, has been around for 40 years. We were part of Intel at one point, and now we're independent, owned by a company called Aptiv. And with that, we get another round of investment to help continue our acceleration into this market. So, the Dell partnership is about, like I said, velocity accelerating the adoption. When we talk to operators, they have told us there are many roadblocks that they face, right? Like systems integration, operating at scale. Because when you buy a traditional radio access network solution from a single supplier, it's very easy, it works, it's been tested. When you break these, components apart and disaggregate them, as we talked about, David, it creates integration points and support issues, right? And what Dell and Wind River have done together is created a cloud infrastructure solution that could host a variety of RAN workloads and essentially create a two-layer cake. What we're, overall, what we're trying to do is create a traditional RAN experience with the innovation, agility, and flexibility of Open RAN. And that's really what this partnership does. So these work, this workload innovation is interesting to me because you've got now developers, you know, the, you know what's the telco developer look like? You know, it's to be defined, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like this white sheet of paper that can create all this innovation. And to do that, you've got to have, as I said earlier, an ecosystem, but you've got now, I'm interested in your open RAN agenda and how you see that sort of maturity model taking place, because today, you got disruptors that are going to lean right in. Say, right. hey, yeah, that's great. <clears throat> the traditional carriers, they have to have a, you know, they have to migrate, they have to have a hybrid world. We know that takes time. So what's that look like in the marketplace today? Yeah, so I mean I can start, right? So from a Dell's perspective, what we see in the market is yes, there is a drive towards everyone understands the benefits of being open, right? There's, there's the agility piece, the innovation piece, that's a no-brainer. The question is how do we get there? And I think that's where partnerships become critical to get there. Right? So we've been working with partners like Wind River to build solutions that make it easier for customers to start adopting some of the foundational elements of an open network. The, one of the purposes and the agenda of building this community is to bring like-minded developers like you said. Like we want those guys to come and work with the customers to create new solutions and come up with something creative which no one's even thought about that accelerates the adoption even quicker. Right? So that's exactly what we want to do as well. And that's one of the reasons why we launched the community. Yeah. Um, and what we find with a lot of carriers, they are used to buying, like I said, traditional RAN solutions, which yeah. are provided from a single provider like Ericsson or Nokia and others, right? And we break this apart and you cloudify that network infrastructure, there's usually a skills gap we see at the operator level, right? Mm -hmm. And so from a developer standpoint, they struggle with having the expertise in order to execute on that. 
Wind River helps them, working with companies like Dell, simplify that bottom portion of the stack, the infrastructure stack, so and we life cycle manage it, we test, we're continually see, testing it and integrating it so that the operator doesn't have to do that. In addition to that, Wind River also has a history and legacy of working with different RAN vendors, both disruptors like Mavenir and Parallel Wireless, as well as traditional RAN providers like Samsung, Ericsson, and others soon to be announced. So, what we're doing on the northbound side is making it easy by integrating that, and on the southbound side with Dell, so that again, instead of four or five solutions that you need to put together, it's simply two. And, and you think about today how we, how, how, cons how you consume telco services, or like, there's these fixed blocks of services that you can buy. Yeah. That has to change, it, it, more like the, the app stores. There's got to be an open marketplace, yeah. and that's where the innovation is going to come in. You know, from the developers, you know, top down maybe. Yeah. I, 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 how do you see that maturity model evolving? People want to know how long it's going to take. So many questions. When, can, when will Open RAN be as reliable? Does it even have to be? You know, so many interesting dynamics going on. Yeah, and I think that's something we at Dell are also trying to find out, right? So we have been doing a lot of good work here to help our customers move in that direction. The work with Dish is an example of that. But I think we do understand the challenges as well in terms of getting, adopting the technologies and adopting the innovation that's being driven by Open. So one of the agendas that we have as a company this year is to work with the community to drive this a lot further, right? We want to have customers adopt the technology more broadly with the tier one, tier two telcos globally. And our sales organization are going to be working together with Wind Rivers to figure out who's the right set of customers to have these conversations with so we can drop, drive, start driving this agenda a lot quicker than what we have seen historically. And where are you having those customer conversations? Is that the, at the operator level? Is it higher? Is it both? Well, all operators are deploying 5G in preparation for 6G, right? And we're all looking for those killer use cases which will drive top line revenue and not just make it a TCO discussion. Um, and that starts at a very basic level today by doing things like integrating with Juniper for their cloud router. So instead of at the far, far edge cell site having a separate device that's doing the routing function, right? We take that and we cloudify that application, run it on the same server that's hosting the RAN applications. So you eliminate a device and reduce TCO. Now, with Aptiv, which is primarily known as an automotive company, we're having lots of conversations, including with Dell, yeah. and Intel and others, about vehicle-to-vehicle -to -vehicle communication, vehicle-to-anything communication. And although that's a little bit futuristic, there are shorter-term use cases that, like vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle accident avoidance, which are going to be much nearer term than autonomous driving, for example, which will help drive traffic and new revenue streams for operators. So, Oh, that's, wow, so many other things that's just opened up there too. Um, but I want to come back to sort of the, the open RAN adoption, and I think you're right, there's, there's a lot of questions that, that still have to be determined, but my question is this, based on your knowledge so far, does it, does it have to be as hardened and reliable, obviously it has to be low latency as existing networks, or can flexibility, like the cloud when it first came out, yeah wasn't better than enterprise IT. It was just more flexible and faster and you yeah. could rent it. And is there a similar dynamic here where it doesn't have to replicate the hardened stack, it, it, it can bring in new benefits that, that drive adoption? What are your thoughts well, on that? There's a couple of things on that because um, Wind River, as you know, where our legacy and history is in embedded devices yeah. like F-15 fighter jets, right? or the Mars rover, or the James, uh, James Webb Telescope, all run Wind River software. So we know about can't fail, ultra reliable systems. And the operators are not letting us off the hook whatsoever. It has to be as hardened and locked down, as secure as a traditional RAN env environment, otherwise they That's won't That's table do stakes. Yeah. That's table stakes, that gets us there. And Wind River, with our legacy and history, and having operator experience uh, running live commercial networks with a disaggregated stack in the tens of thousands of nodes, understand what this is like because they're running live commercial traffic with live customers, so we can't fail, right? And with that, they want their cake and eat it too, right? Which is, I want ultra reliable, I want what I have today, but I want the agility and flexibility to onboard third-party apps. Like for example, this 
JCNR, this Uniper cloud native router, you cannot do something as simple as that on a traditional RAN appliance. In an open ecosystem, you can take that workload and onboard it because it is an open e ecosystem. And that's really one of the true benefits. So they want the mainframe, but they want the flexibility <laughs> of the, the developer cloud, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's they right. Have, they want their, they have their cake, eat it too, and not gain weight. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and, and David, I, I come from the public cloud world. We all, I, we all don't want to yeah. do that. Yeah. <laughs> I used to work with a public cloud company, and nine years ago, public cloud was in the same stage, where you would yeah. go to a bank, and they would be like, we don't trust the cloud, it's yeah. not secure, it's not safe. Yeah. It was the digital natives that adopted it, and they, they drove the industry forward, right? And that's where the enterprises that realized that they're losing business because of all these innovative new companies that came out. That's what I saw, saw over the last nine years in the cloud space. I think in the telco space also something similar might happen, right? So a lot of this, I mean, a lot of the new age telcos are understanding the value, are looking to innovate, are adopting the open technologies, but, but there's still some inertia and hesitancy for the reasons as Scott mentioned, to go there so quickly. So we just have to work through and balance between both sides. Yeah, well with that said, if there's still some inertia, but that there's a theme of velocity, how do you help organizations balance that so they trust yeah. evolving? Yeah, and I think this is where our solution like infrastructure block is a foundational pillar to make that happen, right? So if we can take away the, the concerns that the organizations have in terms of security, reliability, from the fundamental elements that build their infrastructure by working with partners like Wind River, where Dell takes the ownership end to end to make sure that the service works and we have those telco grade SLAs, then the telcos can start focusing on what's next, the applications and the customer services on customer the top. Customer service, customer experience. You know, that's an interesting point Gautam brings yeah. up too because support is an issue too. We yeah. all talk about when you break these things apart, it creates integration points that you need to manage, right? But there's also so the support aspect of it. So imagine, if you will, you had one vendor, you have an outage, you call that one vendor, one, one necktie to choke, right? for accountability for the network. Now we have four or five vendors that you have to work. You get a lot of finger pointing. So, at least at the infrastructure layer, right? Dell takes first call support for both the hardware infrastructure and the Wind River Cloud infrastructure for both. And we are training and spinning them up to support, but we're always behind them, of course, as well. Yeah. Can you give us a, a favorite customer example of, that really articulates the value of the partnership and the technologies that it's delivering to customers? Well, so InfraBlock is quite new, yeah. and we do have our first customer, which is LGU Plus, which was announced yesterday yeah. out of Korea. Small customer, but a very important one, okay? And I think they saw the value of the integrated system. They don't have the announcer expertise and leveraging Dell and Wind River in order to make that happen. But I would also say, historically, before this uh, new offering, was Vodafone, right? Vodafone is a leader in Europe in terms of open RAN. Been very, Yago and Paco have been very vocal mm -hmm. about um, what they're doing in Open RAN, and Dell and Wind River have been there with them every step of the way. And that's what I would say kind of led up to where we are today. We learned from engagements like Vodafone and I think KDDI as well, and it got us where we are today and understanding what the operators need and what the impediments are, and this directly addresses that. So those that. are two very different examples. We were talking about TCO before. I'm the, so the earlier example, that's an example to me of a disruptor. Like they'll take some chances, you know, maybe not as focused on TCO. Of course, they're concerned about it. Vodafone, I would think very concerned about TCO. But I'm inferring from your comments that you're trying to get the industry, you're trying to check the TCO box, get yes. there, and then move on to higher levels of value monetization. Yeah. The TCO is going to come down to how many humans it takes to run the network, is it not? Is that? Well, a lot of, okay, so the, the big well? one now, particularly with Vodafone, is uh, energy costs, right? Oh, of course, two, greening two, the two network. Thirds, yeah. Two thirds yeah. of the energy consumption in Iran is the, the radio access network, okay? The OPEX, right? So any reductions, even if they're 5% or 10%, can save tens or hundreds of millions of dollars. So, we do things creatively with Dell to understand if there's a lot of traffic at the cell side, and if it's not, we will change the C state or P state of the server, which basically spins it down so it's not consuming power. But that's just at the infrastructure layer. Where this gets really powerful is working with the RAN vendors like Samsung and Ericsson and others and taking data from the traffic information there, applying algorithms to that and AI to shut it down and spin it back up as needed. Because the idea is you don't want that thing powered up if there's no traffic well, on it. Well there's a sustainability ESG benefit yeah. to that, right? Yes. yes. And, and yeah. it's very compute intensive. Yeah, That's right, which is great yeah. for Dell, but at the same time, if you're not able to manage that, that power consumption, the whole thing fails. I mean, because there's going to be so much data yeah. and, and such an intense requirement. Yeah. So this, this is a huge issue. 
Uh, okay, so Scott, you're saying that in the TCO equation, a big chunk is energy consumption. On the OPEX piece. Right. Now, there's also the CAPEX, right? And open RAN solutions are now, what we've heard from our customers today, are they're roughly at parity, because you can do things like repurpose re servers after the useful life for a lower demand application, which helps the TCO, right? Then you have situations like Juniper where you can take now software that runs on the same device, eliminating a whole other device at the cell site. So we're not just taking a server and software point of view, we're taking a whole cell site point of view as it relates to both CapEx and OpEx. And then once that infrastructure really gets adopted, that's when the innovation occurs. The ecosystem comes in, developers now start to think of new applications that we haven't thought of yet. Exactly. And, and that's where, that's going to force the traditional carriers to respond. They're responding, yeah. but they're doing so very carefully right now. It's understandable why. Yeah, you and know. I think we're already seeing some news in the, I mean, Nokia's announcement yesterday with the rebranding, et cetera. That's all positive momentum in my opinion, right? What'd you like think of the logo? I love the logo. I liked it too. <laughs> it was beautiful. I thought it was good. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you had yeah. the connectivity down below. You need pipes, Exa right? You exactly. Know? But you had this sort of cool, Letters and then yeah. the the pink horizon or pinkish it was like <laughs> endless opportunity. It was That's good. Right. It was well thought out. Exactly. Well, you pick you pick up on an interesting point there. And what we're seeing, like advanced carriers like Dish, who has one of the true open RAN networks, publishing APIs for programmers to build in their 5G network as part of the application. But we're also seeing the network equipment providers also enable carriers to do that because carriers historically have not been advanced in that way. Mm. So there is a real recognition that in order for these networks to monetize new use cases, they need to be programmable and they need to publish standard APIs so you can access the 5G network capabilities through software. Yeah, and, and the problem from the carriers, there's not enough APIs that the carriers have produced yet, yeah. so that's where the ecosystem comes in. It's going to, 100%. I, think, yeah. I think there's eight APIs that are published out of the, <laughs> out of the traditional carriers, which is, I mean, there's going to be 8,000 <laughs> yeah. for yeah. a marketplace. So, that's where the open ecosystem really has the advantage. Um, that's, right. that's right, that's right. Yeah. So okay. it all makes sense on paper, and now you just, you gotta, got a lot we of work got, to we, do. We got to deliver. <laughs> yeah. That's it. yeah, we launched it today. We yeah. got to get some like-minded partners Fantastic. and customers yeah. to come together. Yeah. You'll start seeing results coming out of this hopefully soon, and yeah. we'll talk more about it over Great. time. Excellent. Awesome, thanks Guys, for sharing with us. Thank you for sharing, stopping by, sharing what's going on with Dell and WinWiver and why the opportunities in it for customers and the technological, it, 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 Evolution, we appreciate it. You'll have to come back, give us an update. Our oh, pleasure. Yeah, Thank you right, very much. Thanks, thanks for guys. having us. Appreciate it. Take care. For our guests and for Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from MWC 23 in Barcelona. theCUBE is the leader in live tech coverage.